FM. This is 116 minutes M rated. And after retiring from the ring three years ago, Adonis Creed, played by Michael B. Jordan, lives to fight another day. Of course he does. And, well, the film starts back in the day when Creed, Thaddeus James Mixon Jr., aged 15, was running around with his best friend, an 18-year-old called Damian Anderson, played by Spence Moore II, who at that time was a boxing prodigy. Then a violent incident served to separate the pair. Of course, as we found out in earlier instalments of the Creed franchise, which followed on from the Rocky franchise, Creed would, Creed would go on to become the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And he's now married to a singer, uh, now a producer called Bianca, played by Tessa Thompson, who I really liked. The, the pair has a smart young daughter called Amara, played by Miller Davis Kent. And life seems to be pretty good for all concerned. Creed's operating a boxing academy, managing a world champion called Felix Chavez, played by Jose Benavidez. And, well, Felix Chavez is a bit of a hothead who's looking for his next fight, a title defence against a man mountain called Victor Drago. Remember that from the Rocky franchise, played by Florian Montagnu. And then who should show up unexpectedly? None other than Damien Anderson, played by Jonathan Majors, who has just been released from prison after spending 18 years inside. And despite his ageing years, Anderson's still looking for a title shot. Yeah, he was the boxing prodigy, if you recall from what I mentioned a few moments ago. He prevails upon Creed, who appears to have abandoned Anderson after he was sent to the slammer. Although Creed tries to help Anderson, the former's equilibrium has clearly been thrown, and before this is over, it'll be thrown even more. And there's another threat, of course, as well, involving Creed's mother, Mary Ann, her serious health concern. Mary Ann played by Felicia Richard, who was um, the uh, Bill Cosby's wife, was she, was she not, in, in the Cosby series? I, I did like the setup. Uh, it's, it, by the way, it's directed by Michael B. Jordan, the movie as well, so he stars and directs. I, I thought the contention was engaging, as was the family dynamic. First half then moved along at pace, drew me in established the main players and what was going down. It, at that point, it wasn't clear where the plot trajectory was headed. And, and I really appreciated that. I thought that's that's terrific. But then after a twist, I was let down by the, by the numbers back end. There was nothing surprising about the run home. In fact, the predictability of it was disappointing, especially so given the momentum that had been built up earlier, Greg. Did you not think that? Uh, I, I thought it was pretty predictable and pretty cliched all the way through. Oh, Alex, uh, there is look, and this is the third film in the Clock Creed um, series, which is a spin off of the Rocky films. There, now when it comes to third films in a series, you've got films like um, Rocky Three or um, Indiana yeah. Jones and The Last Crusade, which are fine, and but for every one of those, you get a half a dozen Godfather Part Three, which yeah, are all Godfather, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I thought, okay, I went along with it, and Michael Jordan's direction is fine, I thought, here. He's got a good visual style there. There's some nicely choreographed fight sequences there. And I thought some of the imagery used during that climactic fight scene was quite interesting there and gave insight into um, sort of Creed's insights, um, thoughts on that there. Um, Jonathan Majors is becoming typecast as the villainous type now after this and... Well, Greg, Greg, you wouldn't mind a role that's a bit different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I didn't like the rap influence soundtrack. It was a bit too aggressive and in your face for me. I, I'm not a big fan of rap music. And this just added a sort of another level of anger and aggression to the movie. Michael B. Jordan is quite charismatic. I think he does a good job. I like the dynamic between him and his wife and his daughter there. It gave a bit more uh, humour humanity to the, um, the situation there. But, yeah, it was a little bit cliched and a little bit predictable where it was headed from the word go. Mm. Oh, OK. Um, Dave, what did you think of Creed 3? Yeah, look, I enjoyed the first half, and then I thought the second half was just a, an absolute massive letdown. Like you said, yep. after the twist, um, mm. you have one character threatening to destroy someone's family, take their career, take their house, and doesn't go through with any of them. Um, it just became a really bland film in that second half. The only thing that kind of saved it was Michael B. Jordan being a little bit creative with some of the directional and, and his cinematographer helping him out in that department as well in the second half with some of the fight sequences. But 
I just I can't stand a movie when the the villain makes all these threats and then doesn't see it through. I I spent the whole night um, leaving the cinema and going home with one of my co-hosts and we basically rewrote the second half of the film on how <laughs> we would have liked to have done it if we were writing it um, in the car on the way home. So, yeah, just a really bland, predictable second half of the film that just let it down. Mm. And and uh, the great sporting aficionado amongst our, our team is uh, I haven't spoken to yet, uh, Peter Krause. Uh, you know, you're into boxing, yeah? Huh? Uh, Boxing Helena. Uh, Well, anyway, this uh, Creed 3 is uh, a by-the-numbers film. Three writers couldn't come up with a better plot. Uh, And what disappointed me greatly is that even the fight sequences were not terribly well filmed. I thought... Sorry, uh, sorry, three writers. I I thought there was two. There was Keenan Kugler, who was responsible for Space Jam and New Legacy, and Zach Balin, King Richard, who was the third writer. Ryan Kugler? Did Ryan actually write part of this? Yep. Did he really? I, I, when I looked, I didn't see his name there, but there we go. Okay. Okay. So uh, if you've seen uh, such great films as Raging Bull and The Fighter and some other films that yeah. have dealt with boxing sequences much better, then uh, this film pales in comparison. I was actually quite bored by this film because I could see the mm-hmm. by-the-numbers cliched filmmaking from the start, the story. It just didn't uh, interest me one bit. And, uh, I, in fact, the only thing that interested me was the deaf daughter. Uh, I thought a million-dollar baby is coming up here, maybe. But mm-hmm. apart from that, uh, this this was a washout of a film. I wasn't well, impressed. Yeah, I mean, she, and she was cute and feisty, um, you know, Miller Davis-Kent, but it was, yeah, it, it was it didn't have the depth that, uh, that yeah, it, it, it would have been nice to have had a bit more, more of. But and she was fine. I mean, I didn't think the performances were bad. I thought Tessa Thompson was terrific, um, you know, very, very, you know, and Michael B. Jordan. It wasn't. This wasn't about the acting. It was rather about the script. So, okay, let's quickly get get uh, rid of this one in terms of scores. Peter, you start. Four out of ten. Four out of ten for Creed. That's a fail. Greg. Uh, six out of ten. That's my middle ground. Yep. Fair enough, Dave. Yeah, six out of ten for me as well. Yeah, and six and a half for me. And Jackie, you chose not to see it. Yes, I go out and do the boxing for myself. Yeah, very good. Of course you do. Yeah, you do. Um, 